Starhopper engine still missing and tests push back again. MK2 aka Starship is growing. Mr. Stevens new name and NASA on track with the Artemis program. Welcome to episode 7 of What About It. The community is growing steadily and there are even the first few viewers adding information into the stream of What About It's knowledge. I am right now thinking about creating a Discord channel for What About It. What are your thoughts? Until I have that Discord channel, you can also use my email address under whataboutit.contact at gmail.com to send me information. So if you see anything missing or maybe incorrect in an episode, or if you have something where you feel I might not know it yet or it would be interesting, pitch in! Send an email and I'll be sure to read it and get in contact. Also, make sure to hit the bell next to the subscribe button. I do not want to make clickbait. If you want to see my videos pop up on that main page, you have to click the bell. Otherwise, it might look like I'm out of business. Veritasium made a really nice video about that. Go check it out, links in the description. One more thing before we get started. My last topic today is directly related to my request for information. At the end of this episode, I will be talking about NASA's Artemis program. I want as many of you to tell me about your thoughts, so make sure to watch the last part of today's episode. I really want to hear your thoughts. Thanks again for watching What About It. Now, let's dive right into today's exciting news. Starhopper engine is still missing and test dates have been pushed back again. It's a roller coaster ride that we're all on together right now. When I edited the last episode, the latest news was that the hopper would hop on 17th, 18th, and 19th. I got this news from officials in Brownsville County. It was already outdated though when I published the episode. SpaceX moves quickly. Now it says that Highway 4 and Boca Chica Bay will be closed for testing on the 20th with alternate dates on the 21st and 22nd and on the 24th with alternate dates at 25th and 26th. So yeah, <laughs> Hopper is already hopping as it seems. Just not on the pad, but on the calendar. This is most likely due to a very important part still missing. SN05 hasn't arrived yet. SN05, for those of you who do not know yet, is the engine to make it all work. It's the latest version of the unique Raptor engine. Raptor is very special due to two facts. It uses methane and it is a full flow staged combustion engine. I might go into detail about that on a later episode, but for now just don't be too angry with the delay. Raptor is not an easy part of hardware to develop at all. It obviously takes longer than expected, but we're very close to the first hops now. I can already smell the bloom. Starhopper MK2 aka Starship is growing. Recently, we talked about the new construction site in Cocoa, Florida. There, a second team of engineers is building Starhopper MK2, recently renamed to Starship. Both teams use different methods of building it and by that explore different solutions of the construction process. And process there is. The latest addition? A nose cone. It's just remarkable how fast and unconventional SpaceX is plowing through this project. There are no engines on Starship yet, but according to Elon, both the hopper in Texas and the Starship in Florida are supposed to fly this year. In Boca Chica, they are building a dedicated launch pad. But where will Starship fly? Recently, evidence has been surfacing that SpaceX is planning to make a new landing pad at Kennedy Space Center's Pad 39A. The proposal shows that a new launch mount would be erected east of the existing Falcon launch mount. Since transportation is rather difficult with a 9 meter diameter rocket, a new landing pad inside the perimeter would be needed as well. Also, the potential modifications for Pad 39A would support Super Heavy, the first stage booster for Starship. I can't wait to get my first look at it and I'm sure you can't wait either. If it's true and SpaceX wants to make both prototypes fly this year, we should see construction start at Kennedy Space Center rather soon. Mr. Steven has been renamed. You heard me, all you fans who bought coffee mugs and base caps and t-shirts, you're pretty much busted. For those of you who did not buy t-shirts because you didn't know who Mr. Stevens is, here's a little recap. It's SpaceX's boat supposed to catch payload fairings falling from the sky. For this, SpaceX has attached a giant net to the boat, which has been upgraded multiple times. The reason for this can be seen here. It is insanely difficult to catch something with a boat that falls down from orbit, constantly changing speed and direction due to its very unaerodynamical shape. Aside from the constant upgrades, apparently SpaceX has just renamed their fairing catching boat. Now we'll only have to find out what the new name stands for. A tree catching a fairing? I had a very interesting chat with Chris Rogers, the moderator of Facebook's SpaceX group. He presented a reasonable explanation. 
GO stands for Guys Offshore. That's the company that recently bought Mr. Steven. Since it's a tradition to change a ship's name when its owner changes, they renamed it. Now the rest of their fleet has names like Searcher, Quest or Discovery. To make the new ship's name fit within that scheme but also sound similar to Mr. Steven, they came up with Miss Tree. Get it? Mystery? Why not call it Boaty Mac Catchface? May you float and catch loads of fairings. Now here comes the topic I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Is NASA's Artemis on track? So what is Artemis? The Artemis program describes NASA's effort to establish a sustainable presence on the moon and a first visit to Mars. President Donald Trump has approved the biggest NASA budget in years to get the ball rolling. Under the motto, we are going, NASA has called to action and is using the SLS, a moon base, the Orion capsule and later even a Mars station and a shuttle between the planets to get us on the road towards a spacefaring species. But what about it? Is that the right approach? Let's analyze what we know. SLS or Space Launch System is supposed to be built in different variants or blocks. Block 1, which will also be used for the Orion moon mission, will be able to carry 95 tons into LEO and 26 tons to the moon. It will only be able to carry Orion into a high lunar orbit though. Landing won't be possible as Orion is too heavy. Going to the moon, Orion will be about 30 tons. So originally planned was a Block 1B for the SLS with a stronger upper stage to carry 45 tons to the moon. The problem with the upper stage though is that the budget for it will be used to fund Lockheed Martin's project of building a lunar station. This lunar station, also known as Lunar Gateway, then is supposed to get a lunar lander down to the surface of the moon. Now here's where it gets even stranger. NASA announced that they want to use solar electric propulsion to go to Mars. In theory, this sounds good. In reality though, electric propulsion will take 300 days to reach Mars with a proposed solution. A chemical rocket can make the same distance in 180 days or less. The problem here is zero G. If an astronaut stays in zero G for 300 days, he will have a hard time doing science on Mars. Also, the electrically propelled ship can't land on the Martian surface, so a Mars station becomes a necessity. Gateway number two. Just to remind you, we're at two space stations now to fulfill the mission. Let's recap. Two space stations, a heavy lift vehicle, an electrically propelled shuttle to go between the planets and a capsule to reach the surface. You have any idea how many SLS flights it would take to build these? Me neither. Also, SLS is not as new as it seems. The idea was originally designed in 1991 by Robert Zubrin, now he's the president of the Mars Society. The preliminary design was made to go directly to Mars too, as it was supposed to lift 140 tons to LEO. That was 28 years ago. It was originally called Eris and could have brought us to Mars by 1994, according to Zubrin. And that would have made sense. NASA could have used the rocket for 25 years, accomplished some goals and then retire it when something new comes along. This wasn't possible though, for there was the space shuttle which drained NASA's funds. I want to make one thing crystal clear here. This is not the SpaceX fan talking out of me or anything like that. I love NASA and I really admire their work. I just keep scratching my head. Why not use Starship? On Friday, NASA Administrator Bridenstein announced that Artemis will cost about $30 billion until 2024. By then we're not on Mars yet though. That will at least cost the same amount again. The Artemis program will literally cost tens of billions of dollars. Again, why not wait for Starship? They're having a race which system flies first anyway. Starship, as it stands right now, will easily be able to go to Mars in several different ways. Either direct, without even refueling it, or by refueling it in orbit and getting even more payload to Mars and back. For a fraction of the money, same for the moon. I don't get it. And that's why I thought of this topic for today's episode. I know there are some really smart thinkers out there who might be able to explain it to me. So my call to you for today's episode is tell me in the comments why NASA should do the Mars and Moon missions the way they are approaching the tasks right now. So this wraps it up for today's episode of What About It. Loads of open questions today. When will SN05 arrive? When will the prototype in Florida fly? And please answer me that most important question. Why does NASA want to build a moon station, a Mars station, a planetary shuttle and Orion if they could just use Starship? Tell me in the comments. Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and like because this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in making more and better content. 
This gives me more time to focus on what I love doing the most, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Thank you.